Hey guys, my name is Fina Solis and this is Interview with Travelers and My Couch Surfers. Today, my guest from Canada. So how are you, Dai? I'm good. I'm great. Hi, my name is Adea Knight. I'm from uh, Montreal, Canada. So I hosted uh, him um, today, three days. Three now. days. Mm, that's good. So I hope we have. Uh, I hope I make you relax in my stay in your stay in my Super place. Super sweet. Super so, friendly. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm so, so happy to you. And um, so, how was your first couch surfing experience, and how did you know about it? Uh, my first couch surfing experience. Okay, that I can't even answer that because that must have been like a while ago. A while ago. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while since my first one, but this experience is fantastic. That's great. I'm so happy that um, I... I didn't even have to sleep on the couch. <laughs> I got like half True. a bed. <laughs> so uh, you traveled for how many months now? It's been uh, just over three months. Three months? Yeah. How was your three months adventure? Um, it was really good. I went from uh, Montreal to a few parts of Canada, a couple places in Canada, and then I went from Vancouver, Canada to Hanoi, Vietnam, and I was there for about a month, a month in Ving City, and then I started to travel. That's nice. Because in the beginning I, I wanted to uh, teach English, but the experience wasn't what I was hoping for, mm -hmm. and so I switched from working to traveling. Ah, uh, that's good. So it's, you have uh, in your travel, you have a little bit of everything. Traveling, yeah. and like working, a lot of work and stuff like yeah. that. That's so cool. So what made you decide to travel, and what traveling means to you? Um, I just find that when you're like living in your like I was living in I think uh, Montreal for about five years at the mm -hmm. time that I left, and once you're living like in like a societal kind of cycle and trap, Correct. you get comfortable. Or you're just like working so hard to just keep the machine f functioning mm -hmm. that you uh, forget how to like connect with people at mm -hmm. different levels True. and you're not really open to walking up to somebody you've never met before and mm -hmm. starting mm -hmm. a conversation like when you're traveling you're just you're just like a lot more open uh, you're a lot more vulnerable and so you kind of uh, push yourself to make more connections with people because yeah. really mm -hmm. it's like you know, the other people along the way that make or break your trip, Correct. generally. That's true. So, because when we travel, you meet a lot of, like, many good people. And yeah, you know, exactly. Like, well, there's good and bad people, just, like, anywhere, everywhere that I've right. been. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been fortunate to meet, like, you know, mostly amazing people. So, a few bad seeds, but, like, my experience has been really good. I've been very sure. fortunate. It makes you, like, more strong and, like, you know, like, it makes you, like, um... Like, Self-reflect. Yeah, yeah, correct. Like, that's... Exactly. True. It's a word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is the most beautiful country that you've ever been visited? In, in this last period of yeah. traveling? Uh, well, Vietnam is beautiful, and I, I, I've only been in Thailand now for a couple months, but it's mm -hmm. also gorgeous, mm -hmm. and I'd have to say that, like, uh, Koh Samet is like one of my is my second favorite place that I went to mm -hmm. even though I only spent a week there yeah um, but my favorite places in Vietnam are really uh, Sapa and Hoi An um, mm -hmm. they're both really beautiful but Sapa is like extra special I'd have to say and then city wise I spent a lot of time in Hanoi and at first uh, I just like Bangkok when I got to Bangkok like I know that a week isn't enough time to absorb the city you really don't start making connections or finding out the best places to go unless you spend a chunk of time here. So sure. if you only have a short period to travel, you're really not going to have the experience of Bangkok. Okay. You're going to actually probably just feel overwhelmed and never want to go back. You need sure. to spend time mm -hmm. here to Correct. appreciate it. So I felt the same way in Hanoi. For, for when I first got there, I was like terrified to like cross the street or, well, yeah, or talk to locals mm -hmm. because it's just, you know, culture shock. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Once I spent more time there and met more people, it really became a real like a, I felt like uh, the city kind of opened up to me as far as like I could make I could bridge my way to like different like dimensions of the city. That's nice. That's really good. So yeah, I, I think that if you have like a long time to travel, it's you can actually experience a big city. But if you don't, then going to smaller places like Sapa and Hoi An. And Cosmet, it's Correct. a lot easier. You can connect with people. Yeah, They're way more open in smaller places. It's easier. Correct. You remind me of Cosmet. So by the way, I I met him in uh, Cosmet. So we had a great time. It, it was my first time. I'm I met him in Cosmet, and it was so fantastic. And we play we play um 
Burpong, sh uh, burpong yeah. right? Uh, yeah. So I win a lot. So I beat a lot of like jurors. So that's so cool. Mm -hmm. So then I teach a few people as if I'm the pro, but I'm not. But I just like maybe it's. But I did learn my skills from you. I won like three games in a row after you left. Really? Yeah. I wow. used your skills. That's cool. Yeah. It's a really fun game and it's really exciting and it's a really nice uh, place. I like the beach. I like the the. The, the white sand and especially yeah, the it's near to so the city, true. Bad experience that you have. The too. least favorite place I've been on this trip, mm -hmm. I'd have to say uh, Ving City in Vietnam. Ving City? Ving City. Uh, it's just a lot harder to travel mm -hmm. there. Uh, there's like a lot, like, which I actually don't mind if there's less foreigners. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not, like, for me, that's great. Mm -hmm. I like connecting with local people, but there's such a small amount of English. People like had a lot less money than like per se in Hanoi or mm. in other parts of Vietnam, which is extremely like low amount. And so, you know, you get uh, like harassed a lot more mm -hmm. just be if you're white, you know, and they just assume that you're gonna be able to like help them in some way, even if you're actually somebody that isn't in a position oh, to. Interesting. Plus, just the people that are well off. Uh, I don't know, I just find them to be very difficult and they're, you know, just, I just found it, nothing, I have nothing to say, but it was just happened to be the most difficult experience that I had on my trip. Mm, so. Smaller place, smaller city, uh, people that are kind of living like, a, like in the past more so than the bigger cities in Vietnam, like Vietnam's already mm. like kind of a little bit old fashioned and conservative, mm -hmm. and so Vin was very conservative and being like a queer identified person in a place where people are like women should have long hair, men should have short hair, women shouldn't have tattoos, women shouldn't smoke, women shouldn't drink, men should do this, men should do that, men should do this. There's no third gender, there's no there's no trans people, there's so I found that really difficult. Well it's so nice. It's nice to it's good to know and yeah. like you know it's this is really um, informative. That's so cool. If you're going to to disappear right now which country do you want to visit and why? Next, um, Iceland. Yeah. Why? Why Iceland? Uh, just this is my first time. I like going to I'm so people. romantic. I want to like sleep in a volcano, not one that's going to erupt though. But like, it's nice. Uh, it's cold also. It's cold, and I'm used to that because I'm from Canada. Mm -hmm. But just like the the like uh, all the like thermal like mm -hmm. geothermal like saunas and like the volcanic, nice. the volcanoes and you know, oh, just I also imagine the silence there because like in Vancouver or let's say you're going to like a small island in BC mm -hmm. or Koh Samet, even if you find a quiet place to be, you're still close to big cities. Correct. So mm -hmm. even in like utter silence, the sound is like, imagine being in the middle of nowhere in Iceland mm -hmm. and there's nothing around Iceland. No, okay, so true. the like, you the feeling, feeling of science, silence is just going to be much different than being on a beach with no one around but with two big cities next to you. Mm -hmm, true. You know? Interesting. Just yeah, true. So it just makes to you, me like, a, you know, a peaceful appeal. Yeah, the inner game that yeah. you think goodness and like, you know, ideas of things that, you know, when you are in peace, at peace and things yeah. like that. So. Yeah. Interesting. Iceland is so nice. So if ever like people go and visit Canada, what? What can you recommend a place that what people, can I recommend? Yeah, people mm. would go there because you know people can watch this and like we said like maybe they're gonna go to Canada so yeah, any of course. Or, yeah. Well I love Montreal. It's definitely one of the most charming places in Canada. Um, like and it's pretty affordable. I mean, right now mm -hmm. the economy is like not very good, so you can manage Airbnbs and all that can be pretty cheap, but there's lots of people that are that host couch mm -hmm. surfers. Um, also, one of my favorite places, I'd have to say my favorite place in Canada is a small island off the shore of Vancouver. So Vancouver Island, which is, it's near Victoria Island, but uh, yeah, so it's called Galliano Island. It's a golf island. Cool. And you can literally go straight from the center of downtown Vancouver, take a bus, get on a ferry, be on the island within three hours, and it's... Yeah, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Uh, nice. There's a national park there called like Bell House National Park, and it's. I would right. definitely recommend going there, or for that matter, any of the golf islands off of Vancouver 
are extremely beautiful and it's really accessible to get there through public transportation. You don't need a car. Once you're on the island, you you can hitchhike with any stranger. It's completely safe. Like it's such oh, a small no. island that only a thousand people live there. Everyone knows each other. Like there's oh. nothing to worry about. That's and so, so cool. it's a really safe like uh, environment. Yeah, and it's so quiet. The forest is beautiful. But I nice. I really love BC and I really love the East Coast. I, I haven't been to Halifax, but I hear it's also gorgeous. Mm. Small uh, small small, small city. Though. So that's why it must be visited there and like try and thank you. What is the what is the what is the best travel advice that you can give to people? Um, to give to people. Okay. Well, don't bring your shit out with you if you're gonna get intoxicated. Right. Be very respectful of other people's culture and if you don't understand something. Uh, don't react to it. Like investigate and try to understand because when you're traveling, like the culture is going to be very different from your own. Correct. And if you're not respectful of other people, you're not going to have a good experience because you're going to target bad energy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I would that's say. Sure, that's correct. So thank you, Day. And yeah, of course. Guys, thank you so much for uh, watching. And always remember the word is our house, countries are living rooms lakes, seas and oceans or swimming pools. So travel safe. And if you like this video, please click subscribe and thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.